So TGV denoise, or total generalized variation denoise, uh, this is one of uh, the PixInsight team's latest um, and greatest noise reduction tools. Um, it, it can be a little tricky to use, um, but when used well, I, I think the results are a little better than the other noise reduction tools. It does a really excellent job of reducing small scale noise. In fact, you know, you can, it's easy to go overboard and basically pretty much kill the small scale noise entirely, which is, you know, gives you a very kind of unnatural plastic looking image, which you don't really want. Um, the sliders are fairly sensitive, um, so making a small adjustment can make a big difference. So you end up making a lot of small iterations trying to, to bring things in line and get what you want. Uh, it can be used in both linear and nonlinear modes. Um, it doesn't necessarily require masking. It has a, a local support option that um, partially services that role. It's not quite the same thing. Um, but masking can still actually be quite useful um, when using TGP to noise. Um, there's kind of two different ways I've seen TGV denoise used. Um, one is setting the edge protection based off of a standard deviation measurement on the background of the image, and then bringing, you know, altering the strength uh, settings until you're getting a reasonable result, and then altering the smoothness to um, actually tweak how well protected things are. Um, the other method is you leave the strength and smoothness at, you know, at their default settings and only modify the edge protection setting. Um, you know, for the most part, that's what I typically do. It's a little easier to just deal with one slider. And the results I get are just about equivalent of, you know, as using the other method. So in general, that's the one I, I go for. Uh, like the others, you can operate on uh, the, the luminance and chrominance separately. Um, TGV denoise works in, in lab mode instead of XYZ mode. Um, uh, lab mode uses a lightness and A and B components rather than a luminance, um, which is the Y component of an XYZ color space. Um, they're very similar though, so you know functionally it's it's a you know a, equivalent here. Uh, again, there's a lot of parameters in here. Um, in general. I typically work in, in uh, lab mode. You can use RGB mode, but it locks you into only one set of parameters for all of the color channels. And you, you may not necessarily want to apply TGV the same way to each of the independent color channels. Maybe your red channel is a lot more noisy than your green and blue. Um, so in general, I use lab mode to deal with those sorts of things. Uh, you can enable disable the lightness and chrominance tabs. Uh, again, the strength slider controls how much noise uh, reduction is performed. Um, like I said, depending on which approach you take, you may not touch that at all, or you may be using that as a, a major component of your noise reduction. Uh, the edge protection is probably the most important uh, setting, right? Again, depending on how you are going about your noise reduction with TGV denoise, this can be... Um, set by doing an actual test on your data, or it can be used as a slider. Uh, smoothness controls uh, how smooth the non-protected regions are. Um, so smaller values will allow smaller scale structures to pass through them, giving you a little uh, more small scale noise in the background. Um, the iterations, um, you know, this is a very complex process and it can take a long time to run. Generally I run it on previews of an image um, and typically start off with smaller iterations. But in general in order for the, uh, the algorithm to converge you typically need somewhere up around 500 iterations. Even then sometimes it doesn't converge. There is an automatic convergence feature but again I, I rarely encounter data where it converges in 500 500 iterations anyway. So for the most part, the automatic convergence provides little benefit, and it prevents you from using TGV on a on a preview anyway. So for the most part, I don't use that option. Uh, the local support, uh, there are several uh, options under there. There's a preview, so you can see how your sliders are affecting the, lo the local support uh, image. Um, 
you can select the support image itself. You can do some kind of minor non-destructive uh, noise reduction on the support image in line uh, before TGV runs. Uh, this is kind of a mixed bag. Sometimes it provides better results, but not always. Uh, and then you have some mid-tone shadow and highlight sliders. These are very similar to any kind of adjust adjustment you make on a histogram, right? Allowing you to do some shadow clipping, highlight clipping, and mid-tone adjustments on your support image. So this one definitely is a lot of compute time, so it's definitely good to use a preview if you can. So I'll grab the core of that galaxy, and not much else. The, the kind of title, faint title tail over here. The support mask, or it's not a mask at all actually, the support image is uh, pretty interesting. You know, it, it's kind of used to drive how the noise reduction is done. Um, you know, so if I apply it to my preview here, this is essentially what my support image will look like. So it's essentially a, a default screen transfer function stretch, and actually I'll apply it here so you can kind of see. It's a, a default stretch on the data so that you can kind of see what all is in there. Preview. Um, so essentially what I always use is a, a default screen transfer function stretch of my data in here. If it's linear, you know, in this case, the data is nonlinear, but the midpoint was still kind of low. If I look at uh, the the peak of the histogram here, it's at the one eighth mark, and I really want it up here. So, in order to get that up, that's where this 0 .30 something uh, number came from. Um, you may also want to do some shadow clipping or highlight clipping, um, but in general, you know a default screen transfer function stretch seems to work pretty well there. So once you have your local support defined, uh, then you can get up in, into the, uh, the noise reduction part. Um, actually, I'm going to do the chrominance first because the chrominance is a bigger issue in this image. Um, so I'll use, use my typical approach, which is I leave the strength and smoothness at defaults. Um, I think this is default set to 2 with an exponent of uh, minus 3 and I just typically go through see what this does to my image. So you can see it splits out the, the lab components L, A, and B and here I thought that was actually a pretty decent uh, chrominance noise reduction. It, it may be a little aggressive um, because I'm seeing some desaturation of some of the stars so I'll, I'll bring that down a little bit Now this one, obviously, even though I'm, I'm working on such a small area, it's much more computationally expensive. So that's looking a little bit better. I'm pretty pleased with that. Um, so now I'll actually go through, turn that off, and turn on luminance, and see what I get here. So the default settings are... Um, Minus three again at two. Actually, I think this started at uh, three here, um, which was way too aggressive. Um, so I'll leave it at the defaults there and apply it. And oh, I'm applying everything. I'll just let it finish. You can see it. It really blurred entirely smooth the image way, way too aggressive. Um, so essentially I just start bringing down um, the edge protection until I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the result. So I'll do that again. Still, still way too aggressive. Drop the exponent and you can see that I go from 0 .001 down to 0 .0001. So it's a whole uh, factor of 10 different. So I'll bring this up. So I went from essentially 0.001 to 0.005. So I basically cut it in half. Try it again. Better, but still a little bit far. Cut a little more than in half again. And that looks pretty good. I'm seeing some good noise reduction there without uh, overly doing it. So now I'll turn the, uh, the chrominance back on and see what they look like together.
that's that's pretty good. I still see some fine structure along this edge here. Um, the noise reduction is pretty good in the background. Chrominance reduction looks pretty good as I toggle back and forth. So I'll, I'll, I'll go with that and then apply it to the whole image. It won't take significantly longer since my image is so small in this case. So while this is running, are there any questions about TGV denoise? I don't see any in Q&A. Okay. And the nice thing about TGV denoise is it's it's kind of a one-stop shop. It does a really good job of actually finding and protecting structures while doing a, a reasonable job of noise reduction. I'm going to push the histogram a little bit here and we'll see that there is a little bit of, of modeling in the background um, left over. So there's the, uh, the noisy image and the TGV reduction of that. Um, there's some, some blotchiness in here. That's one of the, the artifacts. That, that blotchy pattern is a little bit larger and typically this is where I will um, extract the lightness and then use this as a, a, a really aggressive mask. I'll bring in the, the shadows and highlights and then really push this way up. So you can see those kind of dark blotchy areas aren't going to be protected very well. Apply that as a mask and then use something like MMT um, with some very aggressive settings. So we'll just do tens across the board here for the first few levels. Start dropping them down. I, I, I kind of know what values are like here, so um, it may look like I'm pulling these out from thin air, but I've kind of gone through um, um, a lot of these passes before. I'll apply this only to the luminance layer. So when I do that, it evens out a lot of the... Uh, blotchiness in the background. Um, so it's not a, a huge change because the mask is so protective, um, but it's enough to even out the really kind of dark areas in the background. So in general when I use TGV denoise, I use it in combination with uh, MMT uh, with a strong mask.